Hi guys, welcome back to Thingview. My name is Williams. So I bought and have been using this S23 Ultra for quite a long time. So this device is the main reason why I'm interested in the Samsung ecosystem. And I have been using the Apple ecosystem too. So after a few months of use, I have some thoughts and some experience that I want to share with you guys in today's video. So let's go. Okay, so this video will be a bit longer because I'm going to break down today's content into four steps to build a good ecosystem. Actually, these four steps are not from any specific source. I came up with them based on what I observed and experienced. So don't worry too much about their correctness. It's just that through this model, I will be able to share my experience with you in more a structure and a clear way. Okay, so the first step in building an ecosystem is to have a complete range of device. In this step, many big companies just introduce the device and not focusing on the software and hardware. Unfortunately, there's a lot of companies in this phase right now, just like Google. Google recently introduced the Google Pixel tablet, and it doesn't have any special software features. It simply runs on Android 13. On the other hand, Samsung and Apple already have a huge range of devices and they just sell them all over the world. And if you consider the whole ecosystem for your home from TV to fridge and more, Samsung have everything. The second step is to create a good user experience for each individual device. This means that after having a complete set of products like smartphone, tablet, headphone, and smartwatches, each of these devices must offer a great user experience on its own. For example, the smartphone should have a beautiful design, a great display, excellent camera quality, and long battery life. The tablet should have features like a comfortable stylus for drawing and writing. Each product should stand out on its own and users should be enjoy using them. In this phase, both Samsung and Apple are doing an excellent job. For example, the S23 Ultra is a nearly perfect and stable smartphone from Samsung. The camera is impressive compared to the iPhone 14 Pro. The Galaxy Tab S8 series has outstanding hardware, a stylus for enjoyable drawing and writing, and Samsung DeX for unique functionality. The Galaxy Watch run on Google Wear OS, but many features are mostly from Samsung Tizen OS, making it a great smartwatch. Galaxy Buds also offer excellent sound quality and seamless multi-device connectivity. I won't go too much detail about each device because that's not the point of the video. I'm highlighting this strong point to show that each Samsung device has a unique capabilities and good user experience, just like the S23 Ultra has good zoom qualities and Samsung DeX on tablets. And now when there are enough good products, we move on to step three, which is to build synchronization features among these device to make them work seamlessly together. This is where the gap between Samsung and Apple begins. In this step, I will use Apple as a reference to see what Samsung can achieve. Apple combines all these synchronization features under the name of continuities. Okay, let's go through each features one by one to see what Samsung can do in comparison. Airdrops. Samsung has quick shares, and recently Google introduced nearby share beta, which worked well for sharing files between Android phones and Windows laptops. Air to play Mac. This feature is about streaming content from an iPhone to a Mac. Samsung offers phone link for Windows laptop, which allow for similar functionality. Apple Pay. Samsung Pay is available as an alternative. Auto unlock. Using an Apple Watch to unlock an iPhone or a MacBook. Unfortunately, Samsung Galaxy Watch doesn't support this feature yet. Continuity mockup and continuity sketch. These features allow using an iPad as an extended display for Macs and for drawing directly on iPad and syncing it to the Mac. Samsung and Windows doesn't offer a similar options. Handoff. Samsung latest phone link apps support a similar features. Instant hotspot. Samsung phone link also support instant hotspot. Receive call and messages. Samsung offers this feature. Use iPad as a second screen. Samsung tablets support this. Universal control. These features allow using a mouse on MacBook and moving it between iPhone, Macs, and iPad. Samsung has a similar features, but it's limited to use with Samsung laptops. So Samsung offer all the synchronization features, but only three missing. But this is where the differences begin to show. To clear the issues, I will move on to the fourth stage, which is continuous improvement on each device and synchronization features. I place this in the fourth stage because the step three is about naming the synchronization features. But to make them user-friendly and intuitive is a different story. 
and that's where the stage 4 comes in. At this point, Apple is better because when it comes to singing Apple device, all you need is to sign in with a single iCloud account and you're done. On the other hand, with Samsung, you have to install a lot of apps, you have to sign in with the Microsoft and Samsung account, and you have to adjust a lot of settings to use it perfectly. The Apple interface also tends to be more intuitive. For example, when using handoff, Safari's on iPad or iPhone is clearly displays and easy to continue working with. While on Samsung, you need to access the phoning app to see recent websites, which can be less straightforward. These differences can make the user experience less seamless and user-friendly with Samsung compared to Apple. Furthermore, I can see clearly the Apple directions to expand the ecosystem. Apple is creating foundation features and from there, they continuously release API for third-party apps to embedding their functionality. For example, the drawing board features can be embedded into Notes, Freeforms, and any third-party drawing apps like Procreate. This allows users to use the continuity sketch features across the various apps. The continuity sketch feature itself can also be extracted as an API for third-party apps to implement. Apple is doing this for many features, such as embedding FaceTime into Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Freeform apps. When Apple updates a feature in FaceTime or any other service, these third-party apps can also be updated accordingly. Apple SharePlay features has been integrated into Spotify's, YouTube, Apple TV, and Apple Music, allowing iPhone users to watch movies or listen to music together. Apple has even brought the watch surface of the Apple Watch onto the standby screen of the iPhone in iOS 17. These are just a few examples, but what's significantly here is Apple embedding these features deeply into the ecosystem, making it more user-friendly. Apple has control over both hardware and software, and it has continued to integrate everything more deeply. The user experience for individual devices become more diverse and engaging. The synchronizations between Apple users and the device within the ecosystem becomes more powerful. On the other hand, Samsung is heavily relies on Android and Windows, which can make embedding features between devices more challenging. Samsung depends on three parties, Samsung, Google, and Microsoft. For example, if Samsung wants to improve a features like handoff, they would need to collaborate closely with Microsoft to embed it into Windows, rather than relying on the folding apps. Samsung has a feature similar to SharePlay, but it's not available yet because Samsung doesn't encourage exclusive app development like Apple does. Apple built its own ecosystem where third-party apps can easily integrate. Samsung relies on Google and Microsoft, so it's causing some delay in these features. To sum it up, Apple's strategy on owning both software and hardware gives them more advantage in this ecosystem race. However, despite the challenges, Samsung's efforts to provide synchronization capabilities are commendable. The features that Samsung offers are essential for daily tasks and I am satisfied with Samsung ecosystem in my everyday experience. In summary, in this video, I remain neutral and acknowledge that Apple has certain advantages in terms of the ecosystem. However, which ecosystem is better is depend on individual opinion. For example, if you like the design of the Galaxy S23 Ultras, then the Samsung ecosystem may be better for you. And if you prefer the photo quality of the S23 Ultra camera, then again, the Samsung ecosystem suits your needs better. This is why I introduced the four step on continuous improvement of each device and synchronization features. Company must continue to enhance and diversify their features because even a minor improvement in the ecosystem can make a user decisions to invest in and remain loyal to a particular ecosystem. Once users have purchased and integrated into an ecosystem, it becomes more essential for companies to keep improving and adding diversity to their features to retain users and discourage them from considering alternative. Okay, so that's some of my thoughts about Samsung and Apple ecosystem. What do you guys think? Please comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is William and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.